Hello everyone, this is a Sidewinder 7. This is 10 years in the making of my rotary endeavor, starting in 2010 and now it's 2020. I've done a lot of things to this machine to make it the most user-friendly Sidewinder to date. The two biggest things is now it has a fixed stroke at four millimeters and you adjust the hit with a simple spring adjustment. And it's not a screw, so you go one way too far and you just start over. You, so you just turn this thing all the way around. You're gonna have the softest hit and the most tension um, right here, pointing towards that ear. And you rotate down this way and it backs off the tension. And right here, you're gonna have the hardest hit. Ideally, in the five volt range and under, from this range right here is where you wanna be. Lower volts, less tension. Higher volts, higher tension. If you wanna go really fast and, 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 and zip your lines in, you're still gonna need some resistance um, just because of the speed is gonna make it hit harder. So over five and a half volts, you're gonna to wanna to be more in this range. The, a very big accomplishment for me with this machine was actually making it good with cartridge needles. Now, it can only be as good as the cartridge and the grip that you're using. So you need to make sure either a good rubber band cartridge, rubber band cartridges in general, just they pull the needle grouping inward towards the tip and they don't flop around. And a lot of membrane cartridges that I found, if you push it in and then you pull on this, you're, you're, the needle grouping will just flop around in there. So it's not very precise. I have found that the black claw car uh, membrane cartridges are very stable and precise and they have a pretty good tension on them. So the other huge thing with, with running cartridges is making sure that your plunger and goes into this hole and it doesn't have a lot of slop in that hole. So if you're just randomly grabbing a, a a, a plunger and you randomly grab some cheap disposable grip or whatever, you may find that there's a lot of slop in there and that slop is gonna translate to spitting in your, um, with a cartridge. So let's get started here. I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the cartridges because that's the exciting thing. It's about an 85 to 90 millimeter long cartridge, depending on how you measure a cartridge. I think overall length is about 90 millimeters from like very end to the tip of the plunger is 90. And if you measure from the center hole, like from here to the plunger, it'd be about 85 millimeters. Okay, with a standard needle, even though this is a cartridge, I'm just showing you with a standard needle, you just take your rubber band and put it around here. If you have the thinner rubber bands, you can just use two number 12s instead. Um, you could use three. If you need more tension, you can also just go like this. But for cartridges, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it up just how you normally would, but you're gonna tug on it, twist it, and bring it over. And with these thicker ones, I like to just stretch them out pretty good before I put them on because they're actually so much tension that it's not good. Um, you'll just have to play around with this yourself with, the, with your uh, brand of cartridges that you like to use most and your grip and everything. So here we are, 5.8. The most neutral setting is straight down and that's punching pretty hard. I could, I could definitely, uh, you know, run 11 liners just like that, 11s, 14s, whatever. Softer, harder, now you'll see when I got under 5 volts, um, this range it gets kind of funky so you want to stay in this range under 5 volts. I really like them with standard needles. And the other thing that I really like with this machine is I've designed the I've designed it a little bit different. I got the geometry different enough that where it's an amazing color packer. And um, you can whip shade with it okay, but what it's what I feel like it shines is if you want to do some really heavy saturation, but you also want to get a little bit of a smoother fade 
Um, it puts in a smoother fade naturally and very quick saturation. Um, also really good for black and gray because you can um, you can uh, just engage more tension and you get a really soft effect. But when you feather it on the skin for those precise areas, you're gonna get a very easy saturated fill in in your tight corners and such. Here I am at 4.3, backed off all the way. It's mostly best over five volts. It's really easy to control everything. Here I am at five and a half. That's really punchy right there. I could definitely hit 15 mags right there or even my larger medium group liners if I want to do that. I'm going to go up to six volts here. That's really hard right there. And backed off most of the way. And there you have it. Um, let's talk about the impact adjustment. I made this adjustment that where you're not really gonna, you shouldn't ever really have to mess with it. You see, let me use this little guy. You see that little line, you see the cross tip for your screwdriver, but then there's that little line pointing straight up. Most of these machines are gonna be pointed straight up when you get it, or over here, or slightly to the left. Um, on the left-hand side, the tension goes, the impact um, increases. So when I'm talking about increasing, when you push the bar down, roll this over, naturally this line should point to about a two o'clock position. If you increase this, it's gonna raise the point of where that bar hits, and it's gonna raise that line. See, see how that line raises? And when you do that, if you get too much, your machine's gonna be choppy. If you have too little, the machine's gonna skip and it's gonna, you're gonna have the stroke, it's gonna feel like it hits, but as soon as you hit the skin, it's gonna back off and it's just not gonna be hitting right. And that's a time that if it's not hitting right, um, you may need to roll it counterclockwise to kind of raise up the impact pin a little bit. And if you roll it over completely 180 degrees, where that line there is pointing straight down, it's going to be the same setting as if it was straight up. And then it's gonna start the least amount of tension, right, the least amount of tension right down there, and then a little bit more, and then that's the neutral's point again, and then more tension, more tension, and then the neutral point. Again, uh, all, this, all these components are hardened steel, uh, hardened tool steel, I should say, and um, they shouldn't deviate over time. It should be, a, um, the biggest thing to watch out for is you don't want to just run the machine and bog it down really heavy to where you're trying to pull the armature bar all the way up with your thumb because what's going to happen is you're going to flex this cam, this cam's going to flex the spring so much that you could potentially bend the spring out of shape. And by the time you bend the spring out of shape, then your impact adjustment is all off. Again, just treat your machine with respect and you shouldn't have that issue. And just get a little, little looksy around this guy. All right, thanks for watching.